So now the hard part is finally behind you. You've studied for countless hours, for months on end, you've grinded constantly, you've made the sacrifices, and now the MCAT exam that you've been preparing for is just one week away. In this video, I'll be talking about how to prep for the MCAT in the seven days leading up to your exam, and also be sharing some tips to make sure that you crush it on exam test day. Let's get into it. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on this video. For those of you who may be new to the channel or new subscribers, welcome and thank you for subscribing. My name is Terrence. I'm an accepted medical school applicant and I'll be starting medical school this upcoming August of 2020. If you like the video and you like the videos I've been putting out, please make sure to give them a thumbs up and a like. And also leave a comment down below in this video about how far you are from your MCAT uh, exam day. I'm looking forward to kind of seeing the spectrum and seeing how uh, the viewers and how far you guys are from your actual test days. I know things have been getting pushed back a little bit with coronavirus going on. So let me know how far you are from your MCAT exam day. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, from all of you guys. So thus far, I've made a bunch of different videos on the MCAT and how to prepare for it. Uh, my biggest video to date is how I increased my MCAT score 13 points in just three months of studying. And I also have videos on my MCAT study plan, UWorld, and many more. Uh, if you're interested in those videos, make sure you go check them out. I'll link them in the description. But other than the videos where I've answered a bunch of different questions on the MCAT, another common question is, you know, what should I do the week of my MCAT? Another question that goes along with that is kind of, you know, when should I stop taking practice exams? Uh, how do I reduce test anxiety for the MCAT day uh, leading up to my exam? How do I prepare? And in this video, I'm going to be answering those questions. I received a lot of valuable information, not only from my personal experience taking the MCAT twice, but also from different tutors and different uh, things that I've researched myself on how to really reduce test anxiety, how to prepare that week of your MCAT to make sure that you don't reach a point of burnout and you're not overworking yourself for that MCAT test day. I wanna first start off with some good news, which is if you've studied properly up to this point, you should really feel relatively confident for your MCAT exam about a one week out. And that's now a thin line between being overconfident, which is something that you may portray if you are not actually prepared properly. I know I remember seeing a quote that said, you know, people that are prepared properly are typically a little bit nervous, but if you're not nervous at all and you're overconfident you may be due for a disaster um but other than that you know if you prepare properly you should feel relatively confident in this point you should be trusting the process that you've done what you had to do but obviously the mcat is a high stress exam it's probably one of the hardest tests you're gonna have to take up to this point and also it's one of those things that it's such a high stakes exam because everybody knows what's riding on it you feel that stress and it's important to balance that stress with some assurances. You should have some things that are set up uh, to assure you that you are doing uh, what you need to do and you are properly prepared. And two things that you could use is one, practice exams. So I mentioned in my previous videos about my three month study plan, how I was taking MCAT practice exams probably from six weeks out to my uh, exam day. And I was taking one practice exam a week and seeing those scores increase over time and seeing my score kind of uh, consistently be a 513, a 514, a 510, I knew that going into my exam day, I would be in the worst case scenario scoring a 510 or in the best case scenario scoring like a 514, 515. So those things gave me reassurance that, you know, if all case scenario, if everything goes the worst it could possibly go, I'm still happy with my MCAT score being a 510. The second thing you could use are practice exams. So practice exams and looking at them from a certain perspective. So practice exams, seeing consistency over time, seeing that you can consistently get, let's say four out of six, five out of six, six out of six right on certain passages. You can, uh, you're constantly getting certain things right uh, that you were getting wrong before. You know that you're growing over time. So it's important to look at your practice exams and, and say to yourself, hey, I'm getting better. I know worst case scenario, I'm probably gonna get a three out of uh, six right on a passage, or if there's seven questions, maybe a four out of seven. Um, knowing that this is my worst case scenario and seeing that your practice exams are consistently, uh, you're consistently doing well on them uh, is very important and that could help boost your confidence come exam day. So now it's a week of your exam, you've done all this different prep and I've written down some things here that I'm gonna go through on what I did and some tips that I've learned uh, what to do on the week of your exam. So the first thing is I took my last practice exam 
about a week or one day over a week out from my actual exam. I didn't take any practice full length exams on the actual week of my exam. I didn't want to burn myself out. I didn't want to go too hard. And that last exam kind of let me know where I'm going to fall in my real deal. So it was a good tool for me, like I mentioned before, for assurance. And I didn't need to take another practice exam. I didn't need that more, uh, that practice with the stamina. I was good and I didn't take any practice exams my uh, week of my exam. So second thing I did was I focused on refining my strengths. I also refined some of the weak points from my practice exams and uh, practice questions. So I mentioned in my previous videos how I had made a multiple notebooks of things that I got wrong on practice exams and practice questions so that I could review them so I could never get them wrong again. And those really helped me come down the wire because those were basically just an outline of all the things that I was weak in that I need to strengthen and study. So I was basically just filling in all the holes in my knowledge by just constantly studying those notebooks. And I was also studying uh, my strength at the same time. Uh, made sure that I was good with formulas, facts, just random facts, all the formulas from physics, chemistry, biochem, bio, um, everything that I need to know, all the lab experiments and procedures, um, the different psychology and sociology definitions. I was just making sure that everything like that was down and strong uh, during the week of my exam. I was doing a little bit of practice questions. I was doing about 10 passages a day, probably in the beginning of the week. Then I slowly would wind down to less and less per day. I also didn't study as much during the week of my exam. So I studied around maybe six to seven hours a day and less and less as the days went on. And you know, before that I was studying probably around eight to 10 plus hours uh, per day leading up to uh, you know, the couple weeks leading up to my exam. So the week of my exam, I was probably studying maybe six to seven hours at most per day, not going crazy, crazy hard, not burning myself out. Uh, this next one's pretty important. If you're not a morning person, uh, maybe get used to waking up early uh, the week of your exam. Maybe get used to studying and starting your studying and preparation about 8 a.m. Uh, when the exam actually starts or even earlier. Before the week of my exam, I usually studied probably around you know, 9, 10 o'clock I would start. But on the week of my exam, I started studying around 8 o'clock just so I could get my brain used to working and functioning at that time. Another thing that you should do is visit your test center. I did this on both my MCAT days and they were at the exact same place, but just getting used to uh, seeing, you know, getting used to the drive, getting used to seeing what your test center looks like, making sure everything is where you expect it to be, knowing where the bathroom is, knowing where everything is, uh, just gives you a little bit more of security on your exact, uh, your exam day. And it just, uh, I think it helps release some of the stress for sure. Um, so now you're talking about you're doing all these different things. You're doing your practice questions. You're focusing on your weak points. You're refining your strengths at the same time, doing a little bit of MCAT practice questions. Now you're leading up to the day before your exam. So what to do the day before? Uh, don't go too hard. I studied probably two to three hours max, and I was just studying my practice exam and practice uh, question notebook that I had all those uh, things that I didn't know in. I was refining, I was just studying, you know, the memorizing stuff, uh, basic facts, equations, some uh, things in my notebook, like I said. I didn't do any new questions. I didn't want to psych myself out and think, you know, get, get some hard questions from UWorld or whatever the case may be and get a bunch of them wrong and then psych myself out thinking I'm not prepared. So I didn't do any questions. What I did instead to kind of get myself used to kind of using that muscle of seeing new things for the first time was I, I did some reading in scientific journals. I looked at research papers and I was just getting my brain used to kind of seeing things for the first time and working that muscle a little bit. And it was something that I was able to still improve or still work uh, a certain aspect of my brain that the MCAT kind of works, but I wasn't, you know, stressing myself out by getting questions wrong. And the last thing I did the day before my exam was I made sure I had a good lunch pack or a good lunch plan to pack for the next day. I, what I ate was just a, I think a turkey sandwich with on whole wheat bread and, so, and brought some fruit with me as well. I uh, had some water. Um, the fruit I just made sure I had because I like uh, the fruit because it gives me energy um, so it could get me through the second half. I didn't make sure, you know, I made sure I didn't have anything too heavy. And also the whole wheat bread kind of gives me a little bit more energy than uh, if I had like a white bread or potato bread that kind of made me a little bit more tired uh, after I ate it. So I made sure I had something light just to get me through the second half, nothing too crazy. So now the day of your exam has come. 
What do you do? How do you go about it? How do you maximize that day? Well, it's pretty simple. Just do what you've been doing this whole time. If you are not a breakfast person, I'm not a breakfast person. I don't like having a heavy breakfast. I'll have it every once in a while, but on a typical day, a typical day of studying, I would not usually have breakfast or a heavy breakfast at all. So I didn't have a heavy breakfast on my MCAT day. And that's something that you have to just have to just be aware of yourself. If you're not a huge breakfast person, don't just have a big breakfast because everybody says, have a big breakfast, it's the MCAT, um, have a big breakfast. You wanna have a big breakfast because it's the best way to start your day, et cetera, et cetera. If you're not a big breakfast person, don't have a big breakfast and just know uh, what is good for you. Uh, I also made sure that I wasn't rushing in the morning, so I made sure to wake up super, super early, a couple hours early, uh, just so I wasn't the person that was running from my bed into the testing center um, on the exam day of the probably the biggest exam of my career uh, to that point. So make sure you get up super early and you're not rushing. Another thing that you want to do is uh, kind of warm up your brain a little bit. So I mentioned the scientific articles that I did the day before. You don't want to go into the MCAT and that's the, you know, the first thing that you read is like the passage of your first question. Your brain's going to be working slow. It's not going to be reading at the same pace that you want it to. So make sure that you uh, do a little bit of reading in the morning. If you have, I have an app on my phone that's called Elevate and allows me to play like problem solving games and like different math and reading games. And it, it kind of keeps my brain sharp. So I did that in the morning. I read the scientific articles just to get used to reading something new for the first time and kind of having my brain dissect uh, different things in a way that the MCAT kind of likes to, to test. And, you know, when I got to the exam center, I, they gave you a, a list of instructions. I just read that just to read it and just to give my brain a kind of like a warm up in that morning. So I didn't I didn't do any practice questions. I didn't do any studying the day of the exam. I just made sure I warmed up my brain with proper reading and I, I made sure to stay calm. But overall, you should be a little bit nervous on your test day. Everybody is. But make sure you just try to remain confident and, and self-aware that you put in all the effort that you need to do. You've done what you can and all the hard stuff is behind you. Now you just have to execute. Now you just have to perform on test day and just utilize everything that you already know and put it into play. Try not to stress out if you don't know something. Try to understand that you've done what you had to do to get you this far and just let yourself uh, perform and try to have fun with it. It's hard to think about it that way. It may be a psychotic way to look at the MCAT as a fun thing, but this is the last obstacle um, or probably one of the last obstacles for a lot of you guys in getting into medical school and becoming a doctor. So just kind of look at it as that way, put a positive twist on it and try to have fun on that test day, knowing that you could potentially crush it and get your dreams of becoming a medical student and becoming a doctor. Good luck to everyone who is taking their MCAT. Like I said before, comment down below how far you are from your MCAT test day and also what you're doing to prepare. If your videos, if my videos rather have been helping you, uh, give it a like and make sure you share it with somebody who may need it. Good luck to you and thank you again for everybody that's been subscribed to me thus far. Subscribe if you're new and let's get it.